Tada and the Luminous Fairies. When day dies, night lights up. The stars, luciolas and glowing worms are the mayflowers of the sleeping hedge. The path lost in darkness needs light to wind its way through the gloomy woods and heathlands. The large round eyes of the owl in the hollow tree help the old pollarded head to see. Frogs need the light of the moon to complete their metamorphosis. There are more dreams of light in the secret of the night than in the glaring light of the day. Each light is a spark of thought, a glowing ember of the dawn kept alive by a watchful night watchman whose breath revives it when it dims, a lighter of mushrooms and herder of candles. He walks under the canopy of the miniature flowers, going from one to gel to light the campanulus, ignite a piece of stained glass, and mark out the route of nocturnal processions with beacons using the wick of his fairy light. It is the hour of haunting and the time of the fairies of the night, who come and adorn themselves under the silver orbs of fountains. According to the Dreamers of Light, the Encantada is the most bewildering since time immemorial of all of these apparitions of the luminous fairies. Long ago, in Spain, children would leave the village at night and climb a woodland path to the sacred stones in order to admire the apparition of the old Encantada. They would sit down in a circle in front of the entrance to the cave and wait for her to appear. At first, the back of the dark cave, covered with ivy and convolus, would light up with the pinkish hues of dawn and the warm glow of the sky when the sun rises. In the distance, a gentle voice singing a song in a mysterious language could be heard. As the glow of light intensified, the voice came closer. The walls of the cave turned red, bl green, blue, indigo and purple, reflecting the colours of the rainbow when a light whiter than white absorbed all the colours and lit the entire cave and its surroundings. And the trees, the grass and the dark branches of the fir trees turned white and sparkled like snow in the sun. Everything became transparent, the rocks, the clothes and even the bodies of those who were waiting. All eyes were directed towards that light as they tried to locate the precise point where the Encantada would emerge, because it was at the heart of this blinding light that the shape of the fairy would appear. Everyone held their breath, and as soon as her face began to take shape among the stars, sighs of delight and rapture could be heard all around. The spectacle did not last long, and never changed. The Encantada looked at those gathered around her without seeing them, and smiled at the angels. She sat down, and then she slowly combed her long, nebulous hair. No one dared to speak or whisper, as if paralysed by the magic of this sparkling sight. The children remained there opened mouthed and wide-eyed until the light started to fade as she finished brushing her hair. She then gathered her hair and divided it into skeins, while the outline of her shape began to fade imperceptibly. She then put her comb into one of the folds of her dress, got up, smiled again at the angels and, blowing out her own image, she suddenly disappeared. When the children later returned to the village in the dark, still trembling with excitement, there would always be one missing. Size. At first just a sparkle, she then grows following the intensity of her flame. Appearance. It is hard to describe her because she is so dazzling, as beautiful as the day, the sun, the moon and the stars. Beautiful as the aurora borealis and the rainbow, the snow in the evening sun and the sparkling sea. The artists of this century have used the Encantada, the Fairy of Light, as an allegory representation of the Electricity Fairy. Clothes A dress of light, gold and amber necklaces. In Ganoles, in the rural district of Cusia, in the Old Region, the Encantadas came down the mountains to wash their clothes in the river with a gold washerwoman's paddle. Great happiness would be granted to those who succeeded in snatching an item of their clothing, but it was not easy because the arm of the thief often broke like glass in the attempt. Habitat In places of light, in deep sacred caves, more particularly in Spain and in France, in the Ord, Haute Garonne and Rosilien, the enchanteries of the Arige have disappeared today. Food the fate of the children they sometimes abduct is not known. 
The Chronicles say the Encantada consumes Alamander pearls and drives them away from the Faragleans, but this is, this is not very helpful. Customs. When good and evil were still at war, certain spirits refused to take sides. After his victory, God kept the good angels in heaven with him and threw the devils to hell. To punish those spirits who had remained neutral, he banished them to earth where they had to cleanse themselves with frequent absolutions. These fairies, who are half angels, half devils, are the incantadas. These genies always do good and never evil. These genies always do good and never evil. If they are not very often seen today, it is because, having been cleansed of all evil, they have been allowed to return to heaven. Activities. Very mysterious. Hello everybody, and I hope you did enjoy this video. Um, it is a Patreon request by one of my Patreons, Andrew Riley, whoops, who uh, once again has asked for me to do some of my automatic drawings and to show it off to you with a little bit of narration. So I hope that you enjoyed this little uh, tidbit of information on a folklore creature from Spain and France. So thank you so much for watching and as always please do like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you next time. There are going to be more art videos in the future so if you've enjoyed it that's what you got to do. Take care, have fun and goodbye.